Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to a new video. Today we'll talk about everything that is new in the newest season of Lost Light, Season 9. Finally, we are at Season 9 after I think 2 to 3 extensions of Season 8, 8.5, 6, 7. But yeah, uh, we're at the newest season of Lost Light. First off, we get a reminder of how the outbreak works, the conditions, what you keep, what you don't keep, for a more detailed explanation of the wipe. Please, please watch this video. I explain everything in here. Watch this video and come back right here. So basically, it tells us that because of the hippopotamus, we lost. <laughs> Sorry. So basically, it tells us here because of the hippocampal something mental issue you lost memory of all of the items that you have so most of your archive records are reset so you have to collect all of those things again <laughs> but yeah let's jump right into the latest additions of the game first off we have the chinese zodiac statues or as we call them the nita's treasures these are animal statues made of gold with varying values but are in gold tier and these are craftable items as well if you can't seem to like loot them for some reason but i think they're easy to find because since there are so many of them you'll probably most find them in locked rooms and locked cases and one cool thing about them is when you pick them up depending on what kind of animal it's showcasing or displaying it will trigger a sound effect of that animal here's an example hey! nita's treasure it's a rat we can hear a rat bro in connection with these statues there's also a dedicated leaderboard when you collect these and there are varying rewards as well when you reach like the top three i think top three top ten of the leaderboards and you'll get rewards at the end of the season as well depending on your placement of that leaderboard for me it's good content for something to grind for because like we felt like loot was very limited for the past seasons and adding these chinese zodiac statues or the treasures really gives you something to work hard for or to look for in your operations next up we have a new battle pass um just gonna skim through this the featured skin is nice a bit bright kind of a contrast to what the game is supposed to be because we're like militaristic but yet we're showing a uh, ski guy something i don't know the featured skin is okay if you like this kind of style but the main highlight of this battle pass is the level one reward which is the butterfly knife this one is the better option than the current knife we have or the firefly dagger because it has 100 extra damage and it has its own inspection in addition to the battle pass treasure box keys are also available as rewards so these keys are connected with the statues that i mentioned earlier you can craft these keys or key cards of sorts and you'll see some small boxes scattered along the map and you can use these key cards to open them next up we have a new operator named sergey this is where anthony has <laughs> sorry wild beer will never become this guy this is when anthony gets in shape and is not a fat ass so basically a more slim version of a milsim guy i think he's russian as far as the voice lines that i've heard from him because when you dress him up with the outfits that you can get from the draw and yes this character can only be obtained through the gacha draw giving you guys caution to not spend so much money on this if you want to try it maybe try it once or twice but don't dive into like getting all of the skins for this you're gonna get scanned by this game this skin is good and all but it's more on display and aesthetics but yeah going back every time you outfit sergey with a piece of his armor or an equipment he says something like this this will bring us closer to victory this will bring us closer to victory this this will bring us closer to victory that kind of distinguishes that he is a russian character next up is one of the more concerning additions to the game although it's cool that we have a new pet we have two new pets namely phantom and tenraku so if you guys remember since the addition of alice people have like mixed emotions of how they feel about this specific pet because the pet will attack for you they they auto stun you once they stick to you and additionally they change Sirius into Morningstar which does the same thing but is a cheaper version of Alice. In this way Phantom and Tenraku they both have the auto execution skill. So how this works is if you are near someone you knock down 
it will automatically execute someone near you. And you can also manually target the person you want executed by aiming down the sights. So that's the special skill of these two new pets. Phantom is more pricier as displayed on his pricing right here. And Tenraku is the cheaper version. Given that they're varying in pricing, they also vary in their benefits as Phantom will give you at start 4 slots up to 2 by 5 slots max level. And Tenraku will give you 2 slots at the beginning and 2 by 3 at max level. I don't know. I don't know how to feel about these pets. I feel like it's really pay to win and they added more pay to win features for the game which is uh, kind of annoying, kind of scummy if you ask me. But I'd like to know what you guys think about these new pets. To be honest, I did get Phantom. I want to try him out just for the sake of content. But I don't think I'll be abusing his ability as much. Next up, we have the Lava Spray. This is the reactive camo they recently added to the game. Basically, the more you shoot, the more your gun will react. So make sure you miss all of your shots. I'm kidding though. But yeah, every time you shoot, your gun will react to the Lava Camo Spray. Next up, your arsenal now serves as a storage for your loadouts when you respawn. So in case you die during an operation and respawn into the game, you now have an option to choose your equipment from your arsenal. So you can put in weapons, armor, bullets, medical kits inside this arsenal storage and you can pull them out into your current equipment as you are respawning back into an operation. So this is a good option if you want to save up on your money and on your loot and utilize what weapons you have specifically stored in your arsenal. Next up, they updated the disarm feature in the game. Before, it was a QTE for the one who is getting disarmed. Now, it's a QTE for both sides. So, if you do it successfully on your side, you will be disarming your enemy immediately. But if they do it right on their side, they're preventing the disarm. One thing I don't know yet is if you both do it well, how's that gonna work? <laughs> I don't know. I think it's gonna be who does the QTE first. Right now on PC, it's not really working well because like the the UI display on it is mobile. It's very mobile in design and I can't interact with it once I trigger the disarm uh, action. So we'll have to do more testing on this uh, specifically for mobile. So I'll do some more recording in the background as well. Or I might also do a separate video uh, for this since they updated this disarm feature. It's like one of my problems when I'm making videos for guides. Since they changed the disarm feature, this video doesn't make sense anymore. So I have to update this video and make a new one. So we have new pistols added into the game. The Colt 357 dual wield revolvers. But sadly, they put this behind the beta premium membership, which is I think around $30 per month or per subscription. I really don't know how to feel that they're putting this behind the paywall. It's really annoying how money hungry they are with this. But it's a Chinese game, so I'm Chinese mobile game is the basis, so I'm not surprised as well. These new pistols are, I think they are strong because they also have a special attack called Rapid Fire where they're gonna expend all of their bullets to shoot rapidly against an enemy. So it's like, again, another pay to win feature that they're adding. So most likely for those who can afford this or will afford this, especially the Chinese whales or even other whales in this game, they might abuse this. But again, it's too much of a commitment to buy this on a subscription basis. Next up, we have the gun shield. This is a attachment. This is an attachment you can put on your ARs as far as I know. I've tested this out with the RP-16 as I feel like it's the closest that we can get to an LMG. It's a new attachment slot to your weapons where you can install a gun shield that will block bullets. These gun shields have 45 durability. There's like They act like a separate armor piece that's not connected to your character. And they are also repairable by using plates or scraps. 
more additions, they added more interactions with how you proceed in combat. They added back throw. They, it says here that when you're running in a direction, you can throw a grenade behind you without looking as I assume. I'm still trying to do this but I don't know how to do it. But it says here that while you're running away, let's say for example you're getting chased by a general and you're a private, <laughs> you can just throw a grenade backwards where it serves as a way for you to fight while running away. I'm still trying to do this. I don't know how to do it. But if those who know, let me know. Next up, we have counter throw. This is where you can pick up a grenade that is not yet triggered and you can throw it back to the enemy. So this more or less applies to time grenades only because if they are instant impact grenades, you can't really pick them up anymore. Next up, we have frag trap. You can now put the frag grenades on doors. You can strap them with some that's very strong tape if you ask me you can strap a frag grenade to a door serving as a trap door now once you install them and the frag trap or the trap door will then explode once an enemy only an enemy enters that door do take note that the frag trap is detectable by the armband if you have this specific module equipped to your armband they also buffed the frag in terms of water damage so it says here if you throw a frag grenade and it explodes inside the water. It does extra damage. Because they're hinting of AI potentially hiding in the water. So I don't know how this is gonna work. Because like there's like very few options of water areas in the in the game, to be to be honest. There's only like the pool in Akiyama, the lake in golf course the waterways in Winsep Harbor, like water pool in BAF. I don't know of the other areas because like some of the water field areas you can't even access. You can't even walk on the water. I don't know how this is going to work out. But yeah, we'll just have to play along and see how this change is affecting the game or like how this feature is added. And continuing on, as we had a trial version of the tactical pouches where you had to store 36 grenades <laughs> they are now also introducing new tactical pouches where you can store in your tactical throwables or your grenades they come in 4x4 5x5 and 6x6 and now they have also reopened the underground area of our company but they have removed the yukirin room from the underground lab and moved it to fisher town and one last good note for this season 9 is squads are back not just trios four man squads are back but currently, they're only available for our company maps. So if you want to play with your bros or your friends or complete randoms, squads are available for our company maps only. I'm not sure if they're going to introduce it to other maps. We'll just have to wait and see. So these are the first batch of updates that we have for Season 9. And I'm pretty sure they're going to introduce more in the coming weeks. And I have some expectations that I want to see in this new season. More of a long shot request, but I just hope they don't put everything in gacha draws. And let us purchase things normally, you know. Doesn't have to be behind a gacha draw. Doesn't have to be a scam like that. Another wishful request is that if they add a new map or potentially bring back the old style of the map where it's an entire big map for everybody to play in. Because the segmented maps are not working, let's be honest. And yeah, those are mostly the things that I want to happen in this newest season. The season is going to be running for 100 days as usual. But I hope there's no more extensions. But I think it's going to happen. Maybe one or two extensions. Depends. We're going to see. But yeah, let me know what you guys think of Season 9. What are your expectations? What about your thoughts about this video? If I missed anything, if I didn't cover much of detail, please let me know in the comments and I'll try my best to get back to you. And I really appreciate you guys giving time to watch my videos and listening to my commentary. So to continue your support for me and this channel, all I ask is your likes, your comments, share this with a friend who also plays Lost Light. And yeah, that's pretty much this video. Really appreciate all of you. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next one.